So this is the third video that goes along with our uh, neurophysiology unit. Uh, so just some basic vocab to kind of start off here. Um, we're going to run through uh, what's generally referred to as the main processes in a um, in neural activity. So uh, we're going to talk about resting potential, which is um, so this resting potential here. That's when a neuron is uh, being charged and ready to send the signal. Okay, um, the graded potential um, is just a small change um, in a uh, charge on a, a membrane. Okay? Um, the action potential is where the neuron is actually sending the signal. So that's when we're actually going to um, the brain decide uh, you decide to wiggle your toe. This is how the signal. Um, uh, this is the signal is generated to go on the way down, and then synaptic activity is at the end of a neuron, um, how you pass the signal from one neuron to the next, uh, or from a neuron to a muscle or to a gland, but you're passing the signal past that neuron, okay? Um, and then the last bit is how we make sense of all the information. So when stuff comes in, how, does, how do we make sense of it? Okay, so let's look at those in more detail right here, okay? So um, this is a big overview of what we're going to talk about. We're going to first... Um, we're going to be kind of making our way in this direction here, okay? So we're going to start with the resting potential, and we're going to talk about this kind of concept, and then a small stimulus uh, gives us a graded potential. It's going to cause the action potential. Um, this is really the action potential is the subject really in the next video, and then synaptic activity and information processing are the last two topics that we'll talk about. So we're really going to be focusing on this part here and what happens along those ways, all right? So, first thing, we keep using the word potential, okay, and we haven't found it yet, so we need to, okay? So, potential refers to, it's kind of like potential energy. Um, what it refers to is the fact that the membrane, the surface of the membrane, is electrically charged or polarized. Both those words, you need to know both of them. I'm going to use them both uh, quite a bit, okay? So, uh, one side is more positive than the other, okay? And this is not caused, like in a battery, it's caused by electrons, um, but what we're talking about here is ions, okay? So we're going to be talking about a difference in ions, okay? So if I had a membrane like this, and we'll make this the, um, we'll make this the outside and this the inside, okay? Um, what we're going to typically see at rest is we have a lot more positive ions like sodium, um, potassium, calcium, things like that on the outside. And on the inside, you're going to have more of these negative ions. And um, that means we have a positive side and a negative side. This membrane is now charged or polarized because you have a positive side and a negative side. Right? And that's really what we're going to be looking at. Right? So the resting potential is a very specific potential. So it's a charge of a neuron at rest. The potential or the uh, the the electrical charge on a neuron at rest, okay? Uh, the number we're going to use is negative 70. This will actually vary a little bit from, from neuron to neuron, but negative 70 is going to be uh, what we go with. Um, now, a couple things about this number. Um, you, whenever you read our voltages with this unit, guys, whenever you read the voltages, the number is important. That gives you the total charge. The positive or negative, you see, just tells you about the inside. So if we say something is negative 70 millivolts, it's telling us that the inside is the negative side, the outside is the positive side, and the difference between the two sides is 70 millivolts, okay, a thousandth of a volt. Um, later on, we're going to see a unit called positive 30. That means the inside has to become the positive side um, because it's the symbol there. The negative refers to the inside being negative. The positive is the outside. Um, the, the inside has to be positive when it's a positive number. Okay, so it's always the inside. So it's the charge inside of the neuron. All right. So there's three things that cause uh, the resting potential, the charge at rest. Okay, so here are the three things listed down below. The first, probably the most important one, is this sodium-potassium pump. So the sodium-potassium pump is going to pump three sodium out um, for every two potassium in. Three, so, three sodium out, two potassium in. Right? So if this is a neuron, we'll put a pump right in the middle. Here's our pump. And we're going to pump three sodium out and going in, two potassium in, okay? And if you look at that right away, three positive charges going out, only two positive charges going in, that's going to help make the outside positive. There's more positive charges going outside, okay? So that's going to be part of it. Okay? 
Um, the second thing is there's a greater permeability of potassium and it slowly leaks out of the cell. Well, if we pump it all in here and some of it leaks back outside in this direction, that's more positive charges going outside. That makes the outside even more and more and more and more positive. We want that outside to be positive, okay? And then the last thing is we have these large negative ions that are stuck inside. They're pretty much just big proteins. So you have these proteins stuck inside, but because they're negative charged, they help make the inside negative for us. All right, so just to draw that a little bit bigger for you, I'm going to add an extra page. So here's our membrane. Here's the inside. Here's our outside. Um, smack dab in the middle, we'll put it in blue. Here's our sodium potassium pump. And the sodium potassium pump is going to pump three sodium out. Three sodium out for every two potassium coming in. Okay. Um, and remember that's going to make the uh, start adding extra positive charges to this outside. It's going to start making the outside positive and the inside is going to start becoming negative. Okay. Some of this potassium then will leak back out. It just leaks back out through those their special potassium doors that let it leak out. Um, and as that leaks out, that adds more positive charges. Remember, potassium is positive. It's going to move outside and the inside becomes even more negative. Okay. Um, and then don't forget, we got these large negative proteins back in here, and they're going to help make the inside uh, even more negative. Okay, um, and that's kind of what we're looking, what we're going to see at rest. So this page just shows you the relative concentration. So ions at rest. This is a neuron at rest. Okay. So most of the potassium is going to be inside. 150 mill millimolar. That's just millimolar. Don't worry about the units, guys. For those of you guys that are terrified by your chemistry, um, just a lot more, right? 150 versus five. Sodium, 15 inside versus 150 outside. So it's mostly outside. Um, the chloride. Um, ions are going to be mostly outside, okay? and the calcium is going to be mostly outside. So if we were to draw a picture of a neuron at rest, okay, I usually draw the cell membrane kind of curved like that so you can see the inside versus the outside really easily. We've got our sodium potassium pump here that's been pumping out the sodium. So most of our sodium is going to be out here, most of the chloride ions is going to be out here, most of the calcium ions are going to be out here, 2 plus, and most of your potassium is going to be on the inside. And that's what we're going to look at, negative, and the inside is going to be negative, because remember it's negative 70 millivolts, the outside is positive, so negative 70 millivolts. Okay. So this is kind of what we would look at rest. Okay, this is resting potential here. Okay, um, most of the sodium's been pumped out. Most of the potassium's been pumped in. A little bit leaks back out um, in the chloride. And remember, this is a simplification because if you go back, obviously there's some potassium outside. Okay, so not all the potassium in here. There's a little bit of potassium out here, but most of the potassium's inside. Most of the sodium's outside. Most of the chloride, calcium, are in those locations. Okay, so classes of gated channels. This is kind of a vocab uh, little chunk for us here, guys. Uh, first of all, if you have a gate on something, it's so you can open and close it, right? So that's what these are. These are these are doors, channels in the membrane, right? Protein doors in the membrane that can open and close at different times. Uh, chemically gated channels, chemically gated channels open when a specific chemical binds to them, okay? Uh, and that's how our sense of taste works. So when we taste something sweet, the glucose actually binds to a little door, opens a door, and it actually um, stimulates the neuron to send the signal to the brain, okay? Uh, voltage gated, okay, they open when there's a change in the voltage, the membrane potential, okay, so the membrane becomes more or less charged. Um, they usually have a specific number. We're going to talk about uh, sodium voltage gated and potassium voltage gated pretty soon, um, but those are uh, the, the gates that open when there's a change in the membrane voltage, okay. And mechanically golded, uh, gated are whenever there's a physical distortion, so a membrane distortion. So this is how your touch receptors work. Uh, so when you've got a neuron sitting in your skin and you push down, I remember the Merkel cells, you push down on one of those Merkel cells, when they get pushed on, one of these doors opens up, one of these mechanically gated doors opens up, and that allows um, the neuron to be stimulated to send the signal. Okay, so the next slide here just shows you um, uh, just kind of a visual of those three things. So here's a chemically gated channel, right, chemically gated. Um, the, the 
wrong chemical, or the sodium can't get in here, right? The sodium is stuck outside. They'll say that's sodium. It's not marked, but they will say it's sodium. Here comes a certain chemical that happens to be a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. We're going to talk a lot about that. Once that binds, it causes the door to open, and in comes our sodium. It was normally blocked, okay? Change our voltage gated at negative 70. The door is closed. Drops to negative 60. We're actually going to use the number negative 55 for these kind of doors later on, but the door opens up, and wow, look, sodium can come in, right? And the third one, mechanic, uh, mechanically gated, so right now it's closed, but if all of a sudden you push right here, you push in the membrane, it pretty much just pulls open the door, and some sodium can come in, right? So those are three types of gated channels, right? All right, last chunk is some vocab for you, okay? So we call, we got a neuron charged at rest, okay? Anytime it becomes more charged, we call it hyperpolarization. So hyper means more, remember, more charge, more charge, more charge, okay? Um, so anytime the charge increases or the difference becomes too greater, so if the number goes up, we're talking hyperpolarization, okay? Um, the depolarization is the exact opposite. We're going to decrease. Um, so anytime the number drops, we call that a depolarization, all right? And the reverse polarization is when we're going to switch the positive and negative sides. Uh, so, for instance, if we start at negative 70, if we go to, say, negative 80, that will be hyperpolarization because the number went from 70 to 80, the number went up. Okay? If we start at negative 70 and all of a sudden we go to negative 55, which is an important number for us, negative 55. Sorry about the writing there. That is a depolarization because the number has gone down. It went from negative 7 to negative 55. Don't worry about the negative in front, just the number has gone down. Okay? And now, if you see the sign switch, so if we go from negative to any positive number, so we'll use positive 30 because that's one that's going to be important for us, it's reversed. It went from negative to positive. Okay? Um, so negative to positive, and therefore that's a reverse polarization. So just three vocab words you need to become familiar with. Hyperpolarization, more charge. Depolarization, less charge. Reverse polarization, you've switched the charges. So just to wrap this up, uh, the big ideas that we talked about in this one, we talked about, about cell membrane potential. Okay, so cell membrane potential. Remember, the membrane is charged. That's really important, okay? Um, We've also then spent a bunch of time talking about the most, uh, the first specific uh, cell membrane potential called the resting potential. And remember, resting potential is the charge on a uh, neuron at rest when it's not currently sending a signal. Okay, uh, so that's the resting potential. And remember, the way we get that, the number we should associate with resting potential is negative 70 millivolts, thousandth of a volt. Um, and we get that because of all the sodium, potassium pumps, sodium being pumped out, potassium being pumped in, the large negative ions trapped inside, and then the potassium leaks outside. Okay? And once we're at rest, in order to be able to send the signal, we want to be able to do something to this charge. So that's where those gated channels are going to come in. Some of the gated channels are going to open a door, and this number is going to get bigger, uh, which means we would get hyperpolarized. Okay? Uh, sometimes we're going to open one of those gated channels, this number is going to get smaller, and we call that depolarized. Um, and there's going to be a point when we can actually see the number become positive, the membrane become positive on the inside, it becomes a positive number, and we call that reverse polarization. Okay? Um, but we're going to talk about all of that in greater detail as we go along. All right, that's it.